and then my um, the company that does my processing. She's my trainer. train trainer. Uh, oh, okay. She's my train trainer. So what do you train her to do? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Is that real good? Yeah. Not spit, not, not kicks, not just be a good girl. Yeah, they, most of them spit, but they don't. I like to stuff them with really, with wool instead of, you know, something synthetic. That's what I do when they I They look do. nice. Cut it with the gray gray. Oh, I didn't think you could get it. Like a, a little at a time. Yeah. If it's light, you put something dark yeah, under it's you. White, yeah. So, and just pick out the big ones. Yeah. Ashley Eater Brock, and I'm doing the dye demos today for Fiber Shed Wool Symposium. And uh, we've got several different kinds of dyes today. <laughs> we've got um, here's fermented pokeberry grown by Dustin, and she grows pokeberries at her house and ferments them in water and vinegar for a few months, and it turns this rich color. And uh, we can see the the fermenting pot right here. Oh my gosh. Let's yeah, so those have been going for months, just fermenting away. And uh, yeah, they give you that kind of like a raspberry color to a burgundy color to a clearly vibrant red. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then here we've got... What are these? These are oak galls. Oak galls are, they grow on oak trees in response to gall wasps. And they, um, they're like the oak tree's defense against the gall wasps. And they hmm. shoot out all these... This, these tannin rich growths and like oh yeah I've seen very, those things. yeah they're very lightweight they're like styrofoam yeah, and they're very yeah. rich in tannins and you break them open with a hammer into these chunks about this size uh -huh. and you simmer it in a big pot of water and uh, you get this nice rich kind of gold color which is over here. Oh my gosh. Here and here. So those things are like, a, uh, you said, a natural, uh, the pl uh, tree's natural defense against... Mm -hmm, against uh, gall wasps. And a gall wasp is a beetle? Or? It's a it's a wasp. Oh, yeah. a wasp. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, and they just, um, you have to have, they don't grow in all oak trees, only oak trees where there are gall wasps oh, present. Oh, okay. And uh, you can use oak galls as a mordant in and of themselves, so yeah. you can dye things lightly or heavily in oak galls first, and then dye other fibers in other colors, and it will help the, the dyes bind to those fibers. And uh, you can also put... Uh, iron oxide. This is iron oxide on the oak galls, and it turns into nearly a black color, yeah. which is really well, it beautiful. Looks like really dark brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, pretty amazing. What's in this pot over here? 
Was that the, that's uh, the poke, poke berries? berries? That's the oh. poke berries that are heated up. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And that uh, facilitates their staining property? A dyeing property, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So stain is actually on the outside of a fiber, and oh, uh, yeah. when you actually okay. dye, it goes into the dye receptors. Uh, so it's like um, all, you know, all dyeable fibers um, have like pores essentially. So okay. cotton has the least amount, and silk has the most, and it pools right, right below the silk. And uh, so it actually goes into the fiber and becomes part of it. And that's, that's a dye. That's the difference between a dye and a paint and a stain, which is just on the outside of the fiber. Yeah, it interesting. For Thanks for mm -hmm. providing the distinction. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't even aware of that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> Especially if I was going to put this out for sale to somebody. And we have, when we have shearing, it's actually February 7th this year, and it's a, an open house. And if you want to know about it, and you go on my website, you can find out, or you can sign up for my email newsletter. Um, in there. And some of it may go back into the good stuff. But do you see there's, there's stuff in it? There's what we call BM or vegetable matter. Um, 
there's dirt, there's stuff that's kind of felted and dirt looking already. Some of that will go be end up being garbage. There's much shorter stuff. You just don't want all this mixed in with your good stuff. So then right? the rest of this. Um, okay, my fleeces are not coated, so they aren't they aren't perfect. There's stuff in them. A lot of that will pick out or fall out as you go. Um, if you're buying a fleece and have the opportunity to do this first, you look or you look at it closely to make sure that it's strong. You take if you're looking at a fleece, even if it's in a bag at a show or something, you don't just go like that. See what I'm doing? I'm pulling the whole thing apart. If you want to look at a piece, if it's acceptable in the venue you're in, you take it like that and you go like that, like you're pulling a bandaid off. Okay? So you want to see that it's got some strength to it. <laughs> pull it like that, you would not want that to break apart. You wouldn't want to see a issue where it kind of crackles apart. So this is a strong fleece. And, um, and these two sheep were short here last year, so that's a year's growth. 